Hi, in this problem, we're being asked to find the polynomial. Being told that the leading coefficient is 1, and that it has zeros negative 2 and 1 plus i square root of 3. By the way, just for extra knowledge, whenever you have a polynomial and its leading coefficient is 1, it's called a monic polynomial. Okay, solution. So we know that negative 2 is a 0. That means that x minus negative 2 is a factor. So x minus negative 2 is one of the factors. In other words, x plus 2. So whenever you have a 0, you know that x minus the 0 is going to be fac a factor. So here, we know that x minus 1 plus i square root of 3 is also a factor. Also, we know that whenever you have um, a complex number like this, uh, that's a zero, its conjugate is also a zero. So in this case, one minus i square root of three is gonna be a zero. So that means that x minus one minus i square root of three is also a zero. So there's something called the linear factorization theorem that basically says every polynomial factors like this, you have some leading coefficient, and it's x minus c1 times x minus c2 times dot 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 times x minus cn, where all of these c's are the zeros of the polynomial. It's really powerful. I'm just gonna put a big P of x here to make it even more powerful. So big P is equal to all of this. So anytime you have a polynomial, you can always do this. You can always factor it no matter what and it's always x minus a zero, x minus a zero, and that's the main idea in this problem. And then we're told the leading coefficient is one, so this a sub n is just one. So that's huge, right, because the fact it's one is gonna make it much easier. And so f of x is equal to this. Now we could leave it like this, however, I didn't write this down, the directions do say they want you know, only real coefficients. They don't, basically, they don't wanna see any complex numbers in the solution. So we're gonna have to take some steps to clear those. So we have f of x equals, let's go ahead and write this as x plus two. And then here we can distribute the negative. There's a negative one here, right? There's an invisible negative one here. This will be x minus one. And then, um, let me write that a little bit bigger. And then negative one times the positive i squared of three is minus i square root 3. And then here it will be x and then negative 1. And then negative and negative is positive, so plus i square root 3. Writing this again, we have f of x equals parentheses x plus 2. Now here is where it gets really interesting. So what we're going to do now uh, is simplify this. So I'm going to use a different color. So notice here that this is x minus 1. And this is also x minus 1. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to invoke a very powerful formula. It says if you have a minus bi times a plus bi, that's equal to a squared plus b squared. So the reason I left all the space between what I wrote is because look, a is x minus one, and b is the square root of three. a is x minus one, b is the square root of three. So all of this via the super powerful formula is going to give us, let me go back to white, a squared, which is x minus one squared, plus, plus, where there's a plus sign there in the formula, the square root of three squared. Boom, so this is f of x equals x plus two. What an awesome problem. Parentheses, there is another way to do this, by the way. x minus one squared, and then when you square the square root of three, you just get three, there it is. What a beautiful problem, I love this problem. I think it's because you have to use this clever trick. However, uh, there is another way to do it. Um, but yeah, also um, a lot of times when you look in textbooks, 
And you look at the answers, they'll multiply this out. I'm just gonna stop here just because <laughs> I don't really wanna multiply it out. But it's not too bad. You would just basically you know, foil and, and keep going. I hope this video has been helpful to someone out there who's working on this really cool math. Good luck.